Thank you for joining us for this video and PowerPoint presentation about 5-on-5 five -five basketball rules and policies. Some important dates. Games start on Monday, February 2nd. This is different from most intramural seasons, which start on Sunday. We will not play on Sunday, February 1st, as the Super Bowl is being played that day, and we often have high rates of defaults and forfeits. All games are played in the record armory. The last day of the regular season will be Sunday, February 22nd. Playoff schedules and brackets will be posted by 5 p.m. on Monday, February the 23rd, and playoffs will begin on Tuesday, February 24th. Important contact information, there's the number for our office, or you can email imsports at umd.edu. Team captains are an important liaison between the intramural office and the rest of your team. This PowerPoint presentation and video is worthless if you don't pass this information along to your teammates. So please, be familiar with the rules and ensure that your teammates abide by those rules. It's also your responsibility to check out the schedule and make sure that your team shows up on time. And please respond to us promptly concerning schedule changes, tournament structure, eligibility, inquiries, team conduct, and other important matters. You can log on with your UID from our intramural page by clicking on the gray box. And if you want to look at policies, just click the policies link. There's also a brief list of sport rules. When you arrive to, at the Armory to play your basketball game, you'll swipe into the facility first and then check with the intramural supervisors or look at the board to see which court your team is, pl is playing on. You'll probably need to check out numbered jerseys if your team doesn't have the same colored shirts with numbers on them. You must have numbers on your shirts for intramural basketball. Jerseys will be available at the table at each court. Some important rules. Please encourage your teammates to carry in gym shoes with them and change once they get inside. In the winter, there's always salt, mud, dirt outside that gets tracked into the gym floor. It causes damage to the floor and makes it slippery and not as great to play on. So please tell your teammates to bring shoes with them and change once they are inside the gym. Jewelry is not permitted. Covering jewelry with tape is not permitted. The only exception to this is a medical alert bracelet. It must be taped to the body. No earrings, nose rings, bracelets. None of those will be allowed. Like I said, all players must have a visible number on their shirt. And black is not an acceptable jersey color. The officials wear black shirts, and that will cause confusion. So any color jersey but black, we also have pennies that can be checked out. If you're going to check out a jersey, a penny, and wear it, you must wear a t-shirt underneath. We don't want players sweating profusely into the pennies. It causes a health risk, so you must wear a t-shirt underneath. If it's cut off, it has to be cut off to the point where the t-shirt is still showing underneath of the jersey. Basically, we don't want the penny in the, or the jersey touching your bare skin. Games will consist of two 18-minute running time halves. Clock will stop for timeouts, protests, and injuries, and it will stop on the last minute of each half for all whistles. Teams will be allotted three timeouts for the entire game, and games that end in a tie during the regular season will end in a tie, no overtime, during the regular season. Current high school rules will be in effect with the timing exceptions listed previously. Teams shall play with five players. You may start with as few as four. A rule change this year in high school basketball. Players lined up along the lane can move into the lane once the shooter releases the ball. The free thrower and the players outside the lane area may not cross the free throw line extended or the three-point arc until the ball hits the rim. Five personal fouls results in disqualification. Technical and player and team control fouls will all be counted as personal and team fouls. If a player receives two technical fouls, they'll be ejected. If a team receives three technical fouls in one game, the game shall end and be forfeited. On the seventh team foul of a half, a one and one bonus will be shot, unless it is a team control foul, and two shots will be awarded after the tenth foul of a half, unless, again, committed by the team in control of the ball. There will be no foul shots for player control and team control fouls. In co-ed, the scoring is a little bit different. Men's field goals are worth two points as usual. 
women's are worth three. A men's three-point shot is worth three, and a women's three-point shot is worth four. Co-ed teams must play with two female and two male players, and the fifth player may be of any gender, but a minimum of two players of each gender is required, and a women's size ball will be used for all co-ed games. Teams that arrive after the start time will be issued a forfeit. Teams caught using an ineligible player will be issued a forfeit. And as mentioned previously, a team that receives three unsporting technical fouls in the same game will be issued a forfeit. Some descriptions of our leagues. Fraternity A and B, only those organizations approved and registered with the Department of Fraternity and Sorority Life can participate in the Fraternity A or B leagues. Members must be a registered pledge or active member. Players with alumni status or those who are not undergraduates may not participate in Fraternity A and B. Players may not transfer from one league or level to another. So pick the team you're going to play with the whole season and play with that team the entire season. Our men's A-League, men's B-League, and men's six feet and under league is open to all university male students except those participating in fraternity A and B or in the graduate faculty staff league. Women's league is open to all university female students except those actively participating in the graduate faculty staff league. The graduate faculty staff league is open to all men and women except those participating in fraternity, men's, or women's league. Open to employed faculty, staff, and enrolled graduate students. Undergraduate students are not permitted to play in the graduate faculty staff league. In this league only, teams may have any combination of men and women, and we do not play by co-ed rules. No ID, no play. Period. Tell your teammates to bring their UID to every game. If they do not have their ID, they cannot play. There is one exception to this. Participant may use a one-time exception per semester for all intramural sports, provided their name is pre-printed on the score sheet and they have a government-issued photo ID. If they don't have a government-issued photo ID, they may not play. If their name is not pre-printed on the score sheet, they may not play. And if they've already used their one-time exception this semester for any intramural sport, they will not be permitted to play. Individuals may be added to your roster at any time during the regular season. Rosters are frozen once playoffs start. A player who's participated for a team cannot switch teams for the remainder of that sport. Varsity basketball players are not eligible to participate in intramural basketball. Sport club basketball players may play. However, teams with one club member can participate at the A or B level. If a team has two club members, they must participate at the A level. Two is the maximum number of sport club players permitted to play on an intramural basketball team. We define a sport club basketball player as someone who is listed on the roster. How much they play or practice makes no difference. If they are on the roster, they are considered a sport club basketball player. The sport club office may be petitioned to remove someone from the roster if they are not a member of the club any longer. During the regular season, we will not postpone or reschedule games due to the university closing or early or closing completely. During the playoffs, team captain or any team representative must come in person to the intramural sports office to request a reschedule. Our office is located in the record armory. Prior to playoffs, teams are encouraged to contact the intramural office and notify us of academic or religious scheduling conflicts. If your team isn't going to be able to field a team at a certain time of day or a particular day, let us know, and we'll do our best when we make the playoff brackets to have your team avoid playing at that time. Game time is forfeit time. If you show up at 6.01 for a 6 o'clock game, you will be issued a forfeit. Captains can notify the intramural office by noon the day of their game or noon on Friday for Sunday games that they will not show up to play and they'll be given a default instead of a forfeit. Default is recorded as a loss and a three for sportsmanship rating. And you're permitted to do this once per season. Any team that forfeits will pay the $40 forfeit fee, which will be charged to the team captain's university account. Teams that forfeit may not be eligible for the playoffs. Every team is responsible for the conduct of its players and followers. 
teams that have at least a three for sportsmanship for the season and have not forfeited a game are eligible for the playoffs. It is the strong belief of this program that contests should be won or lost on the field of play, not through the technicalities of the rules. Please note this presentation does not include every single rule. Please visit our website to read more specific rules. Thanks.